So, um, so this is the third talk of short series, uh, and it was entitled uh, Univalent Foundations of Mathematics. So it's um, Univalent Foundations of Mathematics haven't been mentioned in the previous two talks. They were supposed to give some kind of un background information on what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to uh, try to outline in a very little detail, of course, uh, uh, some ideas underlying the new foundations of mathematics which I'm working on. And um, I'm, I, I call these foundations univalent foundations. So I'll um, start with some um, explanation, some ideas which underlie these foundations. And then I'll just switch to, uh, to a computer screen and show you how to actually prove some theorems in these foundations and give definitions in these foundations uh, using the Koch proof assistant. So the, so, univalent foundations of mathematics. So what are the key features? So the, the first feature is that, uh, let me, can be used both for constructive and for non-constructive, let's put it this way. mathematics. Second, uh, naturally include, I'm sorry for my writing, I haven't been writing on a blackboard for a while, uh, naturally include uh, axiomatization of categorical thinking. Can be conveniently formalized using so-called dependent type systems conveniently and naturally formalized using dependent type systems where dependent type systems is a very well developed by now a uh, class of formal languages in um, theoretical computer science. And the fourth uh, feature is that the whole foundations are based, based on, on a direct uh, formalization slash axiomatization of the world of homotopy types instead of the world of sets. Um, so, you're, you're going to tell us what homotopy types are, would you? Pardon me? You're going to explain what homotopy types are. 
they will be undefiable notions. Just as sets are in set theory, this, they will be undefiable notions in this uh, univalent foundation. So it will be direct formalization of their world without decomposing them into any smaller pieces. So like, like with sets. Okay. So, uh, let me first um, say, um, talk, talk about the following question. So what does, what homotopy types have to do with uh, with foundations in general? And, um, well, first, if I want, I can, I can give a philosophical comment about it. Philosophical comment looks as follows. What are sets? Sets are, uh, mathematical sets are mathem is a mathematical abstraction of the intuitive for us concept of the simplest geometric object. Simplest geometric object is a union of so many points. And starting from this, then one tries to generalize it to union of infinitely many points, and from these elementary pieces build everything else up. So in that sense, when we go through homotopy types, we're starting with not just with unions of points, but with more complex geometrical objects as elementary pieces of our construction without decomposing them into yet smaller pieces. So one can that's, that's one of the um, things to think about. But uh, now let us consider the following um, structure. Let, let us now go back to the usual homotopy category, just the, the usual mathematical homotopy category. And let us consider the following structure on the class of all homotopy types. So let's say that the type T is of level, I should, should say H level, but I'll probably just abbreviate to level for now, but H level, I zero if it is contractible. So a type T is of H level n plus 1 if for every two points t1, t2 in t, uh, the pass space in t from t1 to t2 uh, is of H level n. A simple inductive definition. Now let's let's look at what kind of types we have, uh, which are of low levels. So uh, H level zero, there is only one type, namely one point. I mean, after homotopy equivalence, but because it means to be contractible. So let's look H level one. So we get a homotopy type where for every two points, the pass space from one to another is contractible. So what does it mean? First of all, contractible means has at least one point, so it means it's connected. Second of all, if it has at least one point, then the loop space of this point is contractible. So there are only two homotopy types which satisfy this property. Namely, it's the empty set and the point. And these are precisely what we call truth values in classical mathematics. Or properties. Or now let's consider H level 2. So H level 2 will be a homotopy type 
such that the path space between every two points is either empty or one point, or contractible. And that means immediately that it's a homotopy type with a disjoint union of so many contractible components. So up to a homotopy equivalence, it precisely means it's a set. So types of level two are sets. Now if we go with H level three, we'll see that these are homotopy types such that each connected component has at most pi zero and pi one. So these are homotopy types which are uh, represented as nerves of groupoids, of categories where all morphisms are isomorphisms. So these are groupoids. For example, the, the homotopy type of all sets of bounded cardinality is naturally uh, a groupoid. So it, and, it's, it, and it's the same is on, on each level. The, the type of all types of level n, of h level n, is of h level n, n plus one in the next universe. So in general, we'll have h level n uh, will be n minus one uh, groupoids from the uh, general correspondence between high groupoids and, and homotopy types. You said n minus one, you wrote n minus two. It's supposed to be, let's, so let's see, when, when it's three, it's one, so it's, it's two. Oh, n minus two. <laughs> so I can now um, further reason as follows. So logic concerns homotopy types of level one, because that's where the truth values live. Uh, set theoretic mathematics well, algebra and all, all this stuff. It's about structures on homotopy types of level two. Category level mathematics, what we may probably call Grothendieck type mathematics, concerns structures on homotopy types of level three. Now, all this not so well uh, known so far, higher categorical analogs of it concern structures and homotopy types of higher levels. That was actually one of the reasons why I got into this whole business was because I started to work on this lectures about uh, two theories. I don't know if, if, if Pierre remembers the construction of six operations in motivic homotopy theory. And there I really had to do proofs about um, objects of level four, essentially, on, on, on the two categorical level, but kind of a complex, complex structure. And then I, I was totally in, in despair because writing down these this proofs by hand was, was very difficult. And then it was even more difficult to believe that anyone will ever verify it. So, uh, that was one of the reasons why I'd, I um, started to think about um, these issues. Now, uh, this correspondence in and by itself, well, not this, but uh, this idea of levels and, and the fact that one can think of mathematics of different levels as being related to structures and homotopy types of different levels was definitely known to, to many, um, 
maybe not in such an explicit form, but it's uh, it's not entirely entirely new. It was definitely clear to me many many years ago. Uh, however, uh, it wasn't of much use because our because there was no chance to kind of directly access the world of homotopy types without first reducing everything to sets. And, and therefore, it kind of was losing its, uh, the, the main purpose of kind of building this, such, a, such foundations was, was lost if we had to first reduce everything to sets and then build everything up from sets again. So what has changed uh, quite unexpectedly was the following observations, observation or, or if you want to say it's, it's a claim or, or that uh, the world of homotopy types can be directly formalized without regress to sets uh, using uh, so-called Martin Love Love type system. And that's kind of the observation which was extremely unexpected and which led to, the, to this whole program. It was made uh, more or less independently and from slightly different perspective by myself and by, uh, in, in a different way, by, by Steve Howdy, uh, who was giving a lecture here. Um, in around 2005, so about five years ago. Um, so as soon as we have this, it means that we formalize um, homotopy world directly in Martin Love type theory. Then we formalize these levels. And then we start doing um, rewriting all the mathematics in a consistent way so that uh, we can prove things about n categories at the same time as we're proving things about sets. And um, everything becomes much more elegant. So um, what I'll try to do now is I'll try to explain, kind of defend this thesis, if you want, by, uh, by actually explaining on a computer how to define different homotopy notions in, uh, in, in, proof, in, in Coq. So you could uh, You know, I may still need the, the side, uh, side blackboard, so if you could get the lights. Oh, you, you, we don't have just the side lights? Um, well, this is actually the beginning of the um, table of content of the current uh, existing library of Coq uh, theorems and proofs uh, with, with which these foundations are starting. So it's, uh, as you can see, it starts with um, basic stuff, then ba <coughs> basic things about weak equivalences, which, which I'll explain in more detail like two out of three property, uh, vibration sequences, behavior of the standard constructions, 
something called extensionality axioms. Here the, the H levels appear, uh, how they behave with respect to different constructions, you know, propositions, so types of level one. Um, then there are some so types of level one and two, and so propositions and sets. And at the moment, it uh, essentially ends with, with their little library about finite sets, which is uh, honestly deduced as, as particular cases of everything else. So, and I, and I'll, I'll try to finish today's lecture by showing how Cobb can actually understand and compute with finite sets, and it will know how many elements a certain finite set has. So, uh, but we'll start with something more elementary. And um, I'll just go through, through a simple file with which um, I hope explains the uh, explains how one is supposed to read the Koch text uh, using this semantics in which types are homotopy types. And so we start with declaring a variable um, T of type type. So it, it tells us down here, well, it tells something about declare it as a parameter, which I don't quite understand. It's probably Andrew knows what it means. Uh, but other than that, it says that t is assumed. So it assumes a variable. Uh, declares that t is, is a name of a type. Now we declare a new variable, which is, um, of, uh, which is a function from t to type. So it means for every um, element of t, so to speak, it, it assigns a type. So it's, it's an abstract family of types parametrized by type T. Well, I can always declare a variable as long as one declares its type also. So here I, I this is this is the strictly the starting point of the file. So if, if you if you start if you decide to play with it, you can do exactly like this. You don't have to, to do anything before that. It's. Uh, uh, what is the status of type? That's a primitive notion. Yes, type is a primitive notion. It actually refers to an hierarchy of universes, um, and in which particular kind of layer of this hierarchy uh, you end up uh, getting is, is determined by, um, by the program itself. One can also control these things in a more uh, hands-on level. But um, basically, basically, type here is like a <coughs> big universe of types. So geometrically, I want to think of, it, of T as being a homotopy type or, or a space, if you want. And then a family of types over, over T is a family of spaces over, over a space, so it's a vibration. So in that case, T is a type and, and P is a vibration over T. Now I declare a new variable, and this new variable is, is a point of, of T, so it's, it's uh, a point on this base. Now the next thing is not is not a um, declaration of a variable, but rather a definition. Now I don't introduce any new notions. I just say I will call by x one uh, the expression p of t. So p is a function from t to type. <coughs> t is a point of t. So p of t is um, the value of a function on a point. So it's the type which is the fiber of our vibration over the point t. Yeah, this, this, is the, this uh, uh, the system will know what x1 means. And replace it by what exists in case of sometimes replace, sometimes not. It has a complex algorithms for when it's worth doing and when it's not worth doing. Because 
if one actually replaces all the uh, definitions by, by their meanings, then one uh, immediately, well, in, you'll, you'll see the main file at the moment is about 3,000 lines. So uh, by the end of it, there's a couple hundred or more probably definitions. And, and if it starts expanding them all, then, but, but it, it has some very, very smart algorithms for when, almost like we do, except <laughs> they're different. <laughs> So here is definition, the next definition, which is which introduces the one of the most fundamental concept of the whole uh, dependent type system. Here it's uh, the syntax is an operator for all. So it says x two is this is this type, which is called for all x and t p of x. It means uh, for each x and t an element in p of x. So so an element of this type is a family which, to, uh, which assigns to each point in T an element in the fiber over this point. So simply put, it's, uh, this is T, this is P, It's probably even, can, can one still read this with, with this slide? So this is T, this is P, and now for each X in T, we are fixing a point, which in that case will be called X2 of, X2 of, of little x. And so what we get is, is a family of points in the fiber, so we get a section of the bundle. So this X2 is a type whose um, members or elements or terms are sections of the uh, bundle defined by P over T. Yes, one has to think about it as a space of all continuous actually sections in, in this semantics. Now let's uh, let's try the following. Let's let's declare another type T prime. Now let's consider a constant family of uh, over T whose each fiber is T prime. So it's a function which takes any uh, point in T and sends it to the same T prime. So this 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 thing uh, const T prime is an example of the same uh, type of entity as, as our P. It's a family, it's, it's a family of types parameterized by points of the original type. So in this case, it's a constant family. So to each point, we assign the same type to type uh, T prime. So what is the uh, it's in its annotations. Um, so it's uh, one should put uh, parentheses in here, uh, and then it's a notation which says it's a function, and then uh, here one one puts uh, the type of the uh, of the argument. And then one uh, draws. Well, that is not going to help in this, uh, 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 in this audience very much. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, is, this means a function which takes what is on the left-hand side of this and puts it into what is on the right-hand side on this. this. What other words do you use? You said that wouldn't help for Lam Lambda x, lambda x, uh, t, do, uh, comma, comma, t prime, something. Uh, comma. Prime, yeah. But then, uh, which lambda it would be a primitive, uh, <coughs> lambda is a primitive term in the Yes, and, and this is just, yeah, this is, this is the same thing as lambda, it's just a. So, uh, so we now have this constant family, and let's see, so we can, 
try to do the same. It, it's the same. It's, it's like P, but P was a variable. Now we have an actual represent, a representative of this, a value of this variable, if you want. So we can consider for all x t const t prime x. So, uh, so that would be the sections of the constant family. So we have a family with the base t and the fiber t prime, and we consider the sections of this uh, family. So these are functions from t to t prime. So that's a way to, to use dependent product to uh, define the space of functions. And, and because it's quite long to write it this way, it's typically written simply as t into t prime. Uh, so now, um, now we go to the more uh, subtle things. So, so Koch has this complex system of um, inductive constructions, so-called so inductive constructions. The reason why they're all grouped together and called exact inductive constructions is something to, to discuss in a different uh, situation. So I'll, I'll just uh, give us several examples of these inductive constructions. So the first most important for us is the construction of paths, or what um, Steve Howdy was calling identity types. And I'm just calling paths because that's their uh, uh, semantical meaning in, in this um, approach. So this, uh, this is parsed as follows. So it, it's an inductive definition which defines an inductive gadget, uh, which inductive construct with the name pass, which has two parameters, one parameter of, of type type and another parameter of type the first parameter. And, it, and the result of the application has a type, a function from x to type. So it's for each type, each point defines a family of types over this type. Uh, now that, that sounds a little crazy, but in fact it's not as crazy as, as it sounds. Um, what is actually happening here is the definition Of a path space, so it uh, suppose I have my x and I have my point little x in x. Then I can this this mapping is not a vibration, so but I can decompose it into a trivial co-fibration followed by a vibration. Yeah, as homotopy theory teaches me, right? So this is precisely that. So, uh, th the meaning of this is precisely this. So it, it takes uh, any type, any point in it, and creates a vibration, which means a family of types over this type, which, which is a function from x to type. Now, uh, inductive definition would not be of any interest if it didn't generate with itself the set of rules of, for inductive reasoning with it. The definition of that is what you did not explain with uh, several questions. Uh, let's see, what, what I didn't explain. So the, the part. Uh, kind of oh, 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 on the right. That's correct, I'm sorry. So um, this is called a constructor. And um, in this case, one has only one constructor. One could have a list of constructors, as we'll see below. There is only, it is, uh, for programmers, it means the following. That there is only one way to construct a term of type path x, x, y. And that is this. Namely, there is this one only um, that every, roughly speaking, every term of such a type should, after 
normalization of some sort uh, reduced to, uh, to this uh, standard one. Uh, It's identity path. It's identity path from X to X. No, 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 no. Um, thank you for the question. No, it, it's my name. I have chosen. I, I could. This right hand side is. I can write more or less what I want. And in this case, uh, so there there will be several constructors. I can choose names for these constructors. In this case, I have chosen the name ID path for my only constructor, and that's the type where it um, takes, uh, takes place, so to speak. Now, depending on what I write on the, in here, um, so let's see, I'm, l l let's run. Uh, so each time when I press um, this uh, forward arrow up there, um, the system goes down one line verifies this line and gives me some messages about what it thinks about this line. And uh, So in this particular case, it tells me that, well, first of all, that the line is OK, that path is defined. And then it says that there are three other things that are defined. Uh, now, for our purposes, it's, it's good to forget about the last two. Uh, for many other purposes also, but <laughs> and just concentrate on, on the first two. So path itself is this construction, uh, which is essentially a function from, uh, from pairs of, of a type and a point into functions from a type to type. Uh, we can actually, can actually do this and, and say check Pass, I think check, right? And and it will tell us what, what is the type of pass. And here it tells us what is the type. It says f the type is for all x type, x into x into, well, actually it says for some reason prop, but uh, I would have to, uh, well, okay, that's, instead of prop, there should be type. Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's Koch tries to guess things uh, where it shouldn't, and uh, um, the the way to to deal with it is is not to use this type, which is a generic uh, universe, but to fix a universe and work in a fixed universe, and then it doesn't ha doesn't happen. But uh, anyway, so. Um, so this is the path. This is this mapping. So it somehow it presupposes that all the all the path spaces will be truth values, which which no one asked him to do. Uh, now we can verify what is print path rect, and this is something which we probably want to. Uh, sorry, if I can get this to move. Uh, so the, the upper half of this, uh, one can ignore for now. It's, it's, it's the way in which it, it is decomposed into some internal primitives, it, it's, it, it's, so it's irrelevant. What is actually relevant is this. So this is the type of that, exp of, of that term, which is called path thread. Now yeah, we can see what that, what that thing says. It says, Let's see. For each x type, so that's our original x. For each point in x, that's our original point in x. For each p, uh, which uh, which assigns to any other point in any path from, from that point to that point a type. So um, here I have path x 
um, pass in, in capital X from small x to, uh, to something else. And that's a vibration whose fiber over x0 is past x, x, x0. So P, which is here, it says that for each point in x0, for each point x0 in x, uh, and each uh, point in the fiber pass x, x0, it's a science and type. So it's actually a P is a vibration, well, P is a mapping from the total space of this vibration into type. So P is a vibration over the total space of this vibration. Now it says also we need to fix P uh, an element in P X it pass xx. So it pass gives me a mapping from here to here. And fixing this point is fixing a section here. And I, I'm just reading off the, uh, the premises of the, um, I probably should be showing here. So, <laughs> sorry. So that's our base type, the, the base point. This is the P, which is the vibration over the, um, over the total space of the pass vibration. Um, this is a section of that vibration over the point X, uh, more precisely over the um, it pass of X. And then it outputs, so for any such input, it produces an output, which is a total section of this vibration. So for any such arrow, it creates an arrow here. So this is a rule which, which says that for any vibration here and its section over the point, it outputs a total section, which is equivalent to, which, I mean, which, which is possible if and only if uh, this inclusion is a trivial co-vibration. So if, it's, if, only, if and only if this inclusion is homotopy equivalent. So that's, that rule precisely expressed, so we know that this is a vibration by construction. And this rule is precisely expresses the fact that this inclusion is trivial co-fibration. So when taken together, we get that this past construction actually decomposes inclusion of the point into the space into a trivial co-fibration followed by fibration. Now, that's, that's how I may look at it. Now, computer scientists look at it in a totally different way. And they then create a lot of computational uh, rules of how to deal with this expression in order to, to use this past as an equality. And so they have a lot of tactics and, and methods of deducing from this different properties and so on and so forth, which of course all makes sense in this interpretation, but uh, which are sometimes a little strange from homotopy theoretical point of view. And they're correct, but sometimes hard to guess. So, okay, so let's, let's go further. So that was passed, which is the key um, concept. And that's what I just uh, was saying. And Here are some, induct some other inductive definitions, some simpler ones. Okay. Uh, inductive definition is, um, is a certain part of this program which given, uh, given an expression of a certain form, given a kind of definition of a certain form, which can be a little bit recursive, uh, generates uh, a whole series of objects uh, the, uh, the type which is defined itself, uh, the mappings, uh, the terms of this type corresponding to the constructors, uh, and this uh, recursion rule, which, which we printed in the case of pass, and also an, an additional rule which is called the reduction rule, Yota reduction rule, which in our case expresses the fact that this uh, 
section is actually an extension of this section and not just an arbitrary section. So it, uh, inductive is a certain machine which generates from, from an expression a whole bunch of other uh, expressions and rules. And uh, there is a theorem that this is compatible with, with a model. That each of those things which are defined by, uh, by this inductive machine actually have a well-defined model in, in the semantical model. So, so each of those things really uh, makes sense. Because, I mean, you could, theoretically, you could generate in, uh, a proof of absurdity this way. But there is a theorem which says that, no, it is compatible with semantics. And so each of these objects actually uh, has semantical meaning. It, it almost, but not exactly. Um, it, it's it's closely related to something which is called ends and co ends of functors. So it's actually an end of a functor. Um, pretty much. Ex okay. So here is another defi inductive definition, like the, probably the. Uh, the easiest one. It's empty type. It's, it's an inductive definition with no constructors whatsoever. Uh, and basically, from a uh, computer science point of view, it means that it's, it's a type such that it's impossible to build, uh, build a term of this type. Uh, from, uh, from other perspective, I can say print inductive, or excuse me, Print empty type rect, and we can see what kind of um, induction rule it generates. And again, the, the upper the upper part is not so interesting. We should look at this, and let's see what what it says. It says that for for all. P, for all mapping from empty type to type, so for, all, for any family of types parameterized by the empty type, <coughs> and any point in empty type, we are getting a point in the fiber over this point. So in other words, any family, uh, any, uh, family has a section, if, if you want. Um, which in practice means, since we can take P to be anything, uh, it means that if we have a point in the empty type, then we have a point in, every, in anything. So that's the usual um, the usual rule. So, so the next example is uh, is inductive unit, so one point type. It's it's a type with inductive definition with one constructor, which is called TT. And uh, again, I can print the um, corresponding recursive rule. And recursive rule will essentially say that if, if one has a vibration over this type and if one has a section over this uh, distinguished point, then one automatically has a section over everything. Now, th all, all these examples were uh, non-recursive. So the, uh, this were non-recursive. Uh, inductive definitions. And the next one is inductive definition of natural numbers, which is probably something Andrew spoke about, but I guess from a different perspective. And that one has two constructors. And uh, the one of them is O, which gives a point in this type. And another one is S, which gives an endomorphism of this type. And then if I again print the uh, Then I will see the following. Uh, that's what we need. Um, for, any, for any family of types over, over natural numbers, uh, if I am given a section of this family over O, and if for each number I am giving a mapping from, this, from the fiber over N, to the fiber over the next 10, then this data gives me a total section of the family. 
Again, by taking the family here to be a constant family, it will be just the usual induction rule for, uh, for natural numbers, given uh, a value of a function on, on zero, and then a rule of passing from n to n plus one, we get a total function. But here it's uh, formulated as in, in a relative way, as the fibers over different <coughs> numbers can be different. <coughs> no, there is a restriction on what can appear on the right-hand side of an inductive definition, which is uh, in Coq, I mean, there, in Coq it's called a strict positivity condition. And it's, um, it's roughly speaking means that, <coughs> excuse me, that the object itself so here is the object which is being defined appears on the right and on the left hand side. Uh, sorry, the object which is being defined appears both on the right and on the left hand side of um, of a constructor, and that's permitted. That's that corresponds to kind of simple recursion. But if I uh, wanted it to appear, if I wanted to write something like nat into nat into nat. Uh, and, and take the first two nuts in the uh, in the um, parentheses, that would uh, not be allowed. That would not be strictly positive. So, so there is some restriction, which is which is reasonably natural, but not not altogether natural. Which is sufficient to ensure that these types of inductive objects exist, but which is not really necessary for the existence of inductive objects. So there is th this is this is a little bit of a. Um, this is actually a research area in which many people are working on, on what is the natural uh, generality for inductive definitions and so on. What Oh, oh, you want a relation. You want something like so n, n, n plus n equals, equals, yes. equals zero. There is no such option at the moment. This would correspond to quotient types. Now, the question is, so this is defines a free monoid. But suppose I want to define a monoid with a, with a relation. So suppose I want to define a structure such that O plus O equals uh, O plus O plus O, excuse me, such that S of S of O equals O. So I would like to put a relation. So that that is uh, another kind of open uh, subject at the moment, and um, a lot of work is happening there because it's um, you also if you think about the homotopy theoretic uh, interpretation, then uh, as long as things are free, it's easy. As long as the relations appear, it really creates a lot of extra structures. So there is a good mathematical reason for why it hasn't been um, why it hasn't been done. So um, now let me, uh, I started a little late, but still let me, because it was so much, I'll. Mm. Can we define the big of O then? Omega plus omega. Um, uh, you first have to define what is a cardinal. In, I mean, you, you have to define what is a partially ordered set, right? No, but integers have this uh, definition as as an inductive as 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 an inductive type of certain certain uh, nature. I think it came up when Tuesday and we decided which was one. We had to add an inductive limit No, but if, but if you want it to be countable, if you first have to define, th then it's not just a type, right? It's a type with a structure. I mean, it doesn't otherwise make sense. So you have to first define what is a partially ordered set. Yeah. And then you would say that I want to, want to construct a partially ordered set with certain properties. And I think the answer is yes, you can. Uh, but 
you'll have to start with, with the partially ordered set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can, there's are probably several ways of, of, of approaching it. Uh, you said you have two different kinds of S constructors. Yeah. yeah, one. But actually, what Pierre has asked here is 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 more pressing, I think, is to, to how to define the uh, natural numbers mod two, for example. <coughs> it's, it's harder in a sense. <laughs> So okay, here's an inductive construction called total two, which which creates a total space um, from a uh, from a vibration. So one starts with a type together with a family of types over a type, and then creates a new type, which is the total space of, of this vibration. I'm skipping it a little bit because. Um, and um, okay, so now we're getting to uh, to homotopy theory, and that's the very very first definition of which is really homotopy theoretical it's a definition of what it does it mean for a type to be constructible and and here is the definition itself that it's 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 a type first of all which is a total space of a vibration over the original type x and the fiber of the vibration is the space of sections of of the pass vibration centered in, in, this, in this point. Now that may look a little bit uh, strange, but uh, it's actually a central definition and it's, it's, it's very hard to make it better because what we need is the following. First of all, we need to know that if we can construct a term of this type, then the corresponding X is definitely contractible. And second, we need to know that this is a property so that it has a level one in our, in our sense. So that if we, have, if we can construct two terms here, then they're necessarily canonically equal. So um, it's actually not, so, not such an easy, uh, I mean the definition is in itself reasonably obvious, but then proving a theorem that, that this is always of uh, level one is uh, is quite an an untrivial thing, and and it's and it is done as part of the of the series. So so that's contractibility. I could illustrate you this, but um, I don't think we have enough time, and um, maybe next time. <sighs> well, classical definition of contractibility are many. Um, it may be that all the homotopy groups are zero. Uh, it may be that there is an existing inverse homotopy equivalent to the projection into the point, uh, which is what is realized here, more or less. Uh, well, many is two in this case. <laughs> So, so here is a definition uh, of being of level one, as which repeats the, the one which I gave on the uh, blackboard at the beginning of the talk, that for each x1 in x and for each x2 in x, uh, the space of pass from x1 to x2 is contractible. And, and this is the same, this is the definition of, of what, what it means for a type to be a property. So in particular, uh, there, one would have to prove that for every x, this expression is contour of x, uh, actually satisfies this condition. And actually, one also has to prove that this, this expression is itself is of, is of level one, which is also provable. Uh, now, the next one is, is a set. So a type is a set if for each x1, x2, and x, the type of pass is of level one. and uh, the theorem at which I uh, want to stop is the theorem which says that natural numbers, as defined above, actually is a set. And the proof is not entirely uh, straightforward. So I mean, th th what you see here is not a proof. It's, it's a starting point of a proof, but it's not uh, 
it's not really a proof. Uh, and, um, but again, you can find it in the, you can find it in the, in the main library. And it's mostly in here, there is a notion of a type with decidable equality, and then a proof that any type with decidable equality is actually a set in this sense. Um, and then there is a proof that natural numbers have decidable equality. Uh, so the last thing which I wanted to show, and let me do it here. Uh, wait, where is this? Here, so, so this is the main, this is the main file. And um, I just want to, it will take a few minutes for it to, um, to compile. So it's right now, it's, uh, for technical reason, it has to only work with one file at a time. So right now it's checking the main file again in, in one, one millionth time from very top to very bottom. Um, and um, it will take a few minutes, but um, then I'll be able to, to show you that it can actually compute how many elements there are in its set with two elements or some things like that. Mm -hmm. So the, the last theorem currently in the, in the main file is that a subset, a decidable subset of a finite set uh, is a finite set. Uh, it says, is finite subset, so subsets are finite. So X is, is in the universe, uh, F is a mapping from X to booleans, which is zero, one. Now we're, we're, we know that x is finite, we're given x is finite, and then it uh, implies that is finite the homotopy fiber of, uh, of this mapping over, uh, over true, so, so the subset which corresponds to, to the mapping. I mean the subset which, if, if I have a map from x to booleans, the subset which is assigned to it is, is the preimage of true, right? And the preimage doesn't exist in any other form as homotopy fiber here. So uh, it's a homotopy fiber which has to turn out to be actually a set, to be a finite set, and to, uh, to have the uh, other properties like this. And so this, is the, this was the last thing which I proved before. Yeah, it, te it tells you where you're at, essentially. It doesn't suggest much, but it tells you where you're at. And, uh, Does it at some point say, now we can finish it, but that would be more useful? You tell, you, you tell it what you're trying to prove, is that right? Yeah, you, you definitely tell it what you're trying to prove. Uh, at some point, you, well, it, sometimes it automatically sees that, okay, so, so we've, uh, it, it, it went through this, and is something which I call test computations. Uh, so the very first one, eval compute. So eval compute does the following. It, so, so this, there is an expression here. It's cardinality, which I have defined some, somewhere. The first argument is, uh, is implicit because it will figure it out. Uh, and cardinality only applies to finite sets. So um, I'm, I'm telling it, so I have a proof which is called is finite empty set somewhere there. And um, so take this proof, uh, obviously it applies to empty sets, so it's here will be empty set. And then there is a definition of cardinality, which is also abstract definition. And now, so, so this is generally very, very long expression. Now the way the system works when it normalizes this expression, which means it's simply um, kind of cancels out all, all the obvious places which can be canceled out. So it is a, um, 
decidable process. It's algorithmically um, decidable. So when it does it, it arrives, in, in this case, card of, of something has type net. It has type natural numbers. And, and there is a theorem which says that any normalized term of type natural numbers is, is just a standard number. So it doesn't matter what, what I put there, when I say eval compute, it starts normalizing, and eventually, sooner or later, it, it is supposed to arrive to an actual number. So I can, um, I can play with it and, uh, and see what happens here. And see what happens here with, with the, now there is lazy or not lazy compute. But, but le we can also look at something more complicated. For example, people may not like the look in the lower part. Yeah, it's just two brackets. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> here, yeah, here it, the last, the last computation that it gave us two. So here is a, actually a non-trivial one. So it says, uh, well, lazy, lazy is a way of computing which how it differs of, of it's just a different algorithm of normalization. So uh, compute cardinality of. Uh, the complement to the point true in, in the set of Booleans. And it's, when you look at it, what it means in terms of definitions, taking into account that all the definitions are written for general homotopy types, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. But, uh, but it does it, and <laughs> as you can see, it's one. <laughs> um, and there are other examples like this. So, uh, so this is just a set of um, simple, um, simple requests, which I'm using as kind of a test for, for the previous definitions and everything. So eventually, there will be a compute uh, cardinality of pi 3 of, of s, uh, or well, I don't know, pi 4 of s2. I don't know exactly how long it will take, but <laughs> uh, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>